Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this week we are going to be working on Halloween stuff. So uh, as I'm going to be finishing the videos and the edits, which is kind of what I'm working on right now, I will be sharing them. So this week or the next couple of weeks are going to be a little bit scrambled when it comes to the editorials and the tutorials and the pattern releases. They're just going to be pretty much put up whenever I get the chance. Uh, so you're gonna have to follow me or make sure you are following me somewhere either on Instagram or on Facebook. This is where I'm probably going to be posting the updates, but they are obviously going to be in my blog and in my shop. So if you're on my website, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. So from here, we are going to be working on pumpkins. I've got a few pumpkin surprises coming for you right there, but let's get into those later. Right now, we are going to start with the very cute, very simple pumpkin applique. So let's get into today's video. I have a few surprises showing throughout the video, actually. I'm waiting for something, or was waiting for something, and it happened to show up while I was recording. So I will show those to you as well. Really cool. It's no promo or anything. It's just something my friend made, and I ordered, and I'm in love. So let's get into today's video. So as usual, we're going to get started with a magic loop. And I'm just going to make a regular slip knot here. It's totally up to you what you prefer to do. And pull your loop or your yarn through your loop and tighten it up. Once it's on your hook, make sure it's adjusted properly. I'm going to yarn over and we're going to chain three. So grab your tail, pull it through one, pull it through two, and pull it through three. Yarn over again and we're going to work into the back loop and the other loop <laughs> sorry about that my kids are arguing in the other room so insert your hook make sure that at the bottom of the hook there's only one loop otherwise it's gonna open up a lot when you're working in this stitch this way it keeps it tight and I just prefer the look of it I don't like having a gaping hole so yarn over pull through two and two again to make a double crochet and we're gonna make 12 double crochet in that exact same chain space so insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull it through two yarn over again and pull through two and repeat this nine more times before we get back to the joint now I would like using or at least in the beginning I mostly use uh, I use a lot of stitch markers. I bought about 150 of these and I use them whenever I need to keep track of where I started or where I'm going. So this is a very useful tool and I highly recommend picking up some if you don't already have. You can also use paper clips, hair clips, bobby pins, all work well. So let's keep making this round and I'll be back for the joint. Pull up your loop, and I like to do a kind of join. I'm not sure what you would call it. I, I just call it a hidden join because it pretty much makes it look like the stitch is there. Uh, I go in through the back loop, and I do the top two loops. You grab your working loop, put it over your hook. Make sure you get it into the hook properly. Just pull it through your loop. You have a bit of a space. And I work this into the first stitch, the absolute first stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm really excited. I just ordered this a week ago and I have to share with you. They're so freaking cute. My friend makes these. Her name is Ashley. You can, I'll, I'll link her things down below, like her actual website and her Facebook page. But look how cute these guys are. Come on, come on. She makes them out of resin. They are just so darn cute. I love them. My girls really, really wanted them. So we got them. So let's get back into this. We are going to yarn over only once, so you're not chaining anything here. You're just yarning over, inserting your hook, and pulling up a loop. And if you haven't figured this out, we're making a half double crochet. So yarn over again and pull through your first, second, and the third loop that are on your hook. And we're going to do this a second time in that same stitch. Oh, I don't know if you notice I changed rooms so we can hear my kids, but we might hear my dishwasher. So two half double crochets in there. And then you can use your stitch marker here to help you find that first stitch because it's gonna it could get lost as we're working around. And we're gonna double crochet increase in the next five stitches. Turn over, insert. And let's tie in this tail at the same time, get rid of it, so we can just snip it off in a few stitches. Yarn over, pull through two twice, and repeat your double crochet while working over your tail. Remember to work into the two loops, so you have to make sure you get both of them in there. And do this five times total. Now in the next stitch, you are going to half double crochet in grades, just like you did in the first stitch. So insert, make sure you have two loops on your hook, pull up a loop, and pull through all three. Do this again. So now we're starting to shape the pumpkin. Uh, I find this just gives it a nicer shape, and it really helps with the rest of the stitching. And we're going to increase, again, double crochet increase in the next five stitches until we get to our starting point. Now that we're back at our stitch marker, you pull it out, keep your eye on that stitch, especially if you make it tight, get into your stitch, and we're just going to do a regular slip stitch. We're going to work in this stitch, and we're going to be increasing, by the way. So we're going to step up one chain, insert, and single crochet increase. Now two single crochets in that first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, 
and let's continue shaping. We're going to yarn over. Sorry, I got distracted for a minute there. You're going to yarn over and insert into that into that stitch. Pull up your loop and have double crochet. Again. So you have an increase. I'm going to yarn over and double crochet in the next stitch. Double crochet increase here. I'm going to repeat this sequence a few more times. So double crochet increase, double crochet, double crochet increase, double crochet. Now when we get to that next, or uh, that last double crochet increase from the previous row, we are going to double crochet and half double crochet increase. That's right, it's a combo stitch. Then we're going to go into the next stitch and half double crochet. Over the next two double crochets, we're going to repeat as we did above in the first two stitches, and we're going to single crochet increase in the first stitch and then single crochet in the second stitch. Here we're going to repeat as we did in the beginning, half double crochet increase. And a double crochet into the next stitch. And here, from here on, we're going to continue our repeat of double crochet increase in one stitch, double crochet in the next. Do that a total of three times until you get to, once again, the last two stitches of the row. Here we are going to, once again, double crochet, half double crochet, increase. So it's one of each stitch in that same stitch. And the last stitch is going to be a half double crochet. And just join with a slip stitch or an invisible one, however you prefer to do it. I'm just using both options in this video so that you can see the difference. Now I slip stitched. And we're going to go on and make the stem. If you want, you can make this in a different color. Just fasten off and join a new color. And chain six. I'm going to yarn over and turn your work so that you can see the back of the stitch or of the chain. And we're going to work into those. We're going to count back four stitches. Two, three, four. So there's going to be two bars between this stitch and the loop that's on your hook. So technically you're just skipping two stitches and making 
a double crochet in each of the remaining four chains. I like to make it into the back bar. I find it just nicer. It gives a better edging. And it just looks nice. It, it just does. It looks nice. It looks like there's an actual... It looks like a double-sided stitch, I guess you could say. So I like to make it this way. And it makes it so much easier to work into that loop. If you're working on the other side. Which we will be. Whether you're making the applique or you've gone and get the pattern for the granny square you are going to be working along the stitching or this chain so you're going to want it so last double crochet into that stitch and this one looks weird remember this chain looks weird it's that last chain that's joined i'm going to skip into the last or i guess technically it's the third single crochet of the last row and slip stitch chain one and we are going to get to the last round which is going to be worked in the back post not the first leg not the second leg but the back leg chain one you're over and we are going to be making a half double crochet increase so move that find that third leg right there and it doesn't even look like it's part of the stitch get into it and pull up your loop and half double crochet and repeat and I'm working with bamboo yarn on this one so it's kind of fraying just a little bit <clears throat> it's kind of extra silky I love working with it but at the same time I don't because it, you get hooked in it in the next stitch we are going to double crochet increase And this is, again, once again, we're shaping the pumpkin, you will see. I'm giving it a little bit more depth and kind of adding a layer to it. So this would be the side of the rind, which we'd see a little further back from the surface of the pumpkin. I'm going to double crochet in the next two stitches. Now I bend this so that I can easily find that back post with that third post it kind of pops up a little bit easier as you can see use your nail get in there and this is going to be a bit tricky if you're not used to doing these kinds of stitches if you want you can also do it with a back post stitch and it will add the same type of depth it's just it doesn't give the same exact look because we're making increases it will wave it a little bit so we are going to double crochet in the next two stitches and then double crochet increase we're going to repeat this pattern for two three more times actually two more times sorry two As you can see, the ribbing makes it a little bit, just a little bit textured. But if you're looking from it from close, obviously you're going to notice it. And also depending on your yarn. This one is a bit shinier, so it's harder. So double crochet. After you've done your three 
repeat pattern. Remember, there's a three total. Total. In the next stitch, you are going to half double crochet instead of double crochet. So we're keeping the same repeat, we're just bringing down the size of the stitches and we're reshaping the bottom of the pumpkin. In the next stitch, next seven stitches actually. In the next seven stitches, you're gonna keep working in that back loop or post stitch, whichever you chose. And you're gonna single crochet. There's no increases, we're keeping this bottom flat. So again, we're shaping the pumpkin. If you want that fourth stitch, you can actually make it into a slip stitch and then continue your last three single crochets and give it, again, a little bit more shape. Remember, the best thing about, single cro uh, about crochet for me is that I can shape as I go and I can pull out a couple of stitches and reshape and see what it's gonna look like. I love that, it's so liberating. When it comes to, my, I'm very indefinite. <laughs> I have a hard time making up my mind. I like to try everything until I get exactly what I want. So we're gonna keep going until we have all seven stitches done. And we're gonna repeat. I don't know if you notice, we're mirror imaging everything on this. So again, we're gonna be making a half double crochet. And then a double crochet and then we're gonna double crochet increase and again here comes our repeat for three total times double crochet double crochet double crochet increase Okay, so double crochet increase and that last stitch, make sure you do your half double crochet increase. Reshaping the top and then slip stitching down into the first chain that we made for the stem. Right there. This is why I say I prefer it this way because look how nice it is. And it's just so easy to slip into there. Just so easy. Now, to finish off your applique, I would be joining this to either another knit or crochet piece and I'll do this by slip stitching all along the edging and into every single stitch around. Make sure you line it up nice and flat and you place it the way you want it placed and you could probably even stuff in a little stuffing bag or bead bag or anything and give it a little bit more dimension to your piece you could try with the stuffing but I mean it's double crochet stitching your stuffing is gonna come out and if you put it in a stuffed bag it'll be a lot easier like a little mini cushion case you know make a little pouch and you can just do this all the way around you can also do your edging by slip stitching into every single stitch and then joining it with you know just sewing it onto something you can sew it onto regular fabric clothing, your backpack, uh, your kids' favorite blanket if that's what they want. Um, I mean, you can do so many things with these, it's just a lot of fun. Change up your hook and your yarn size and you can make them in so many sizes. And if you want more details and uh, obviously the pattern, you can get that on my blog. And you can get a, f 
a, a far more descript pattern in PDF format, download format with the chart and you know step-by-step -step photo directions on how to get this completely made for both the applique and the granny square that I'm making with this. And choice is totally up to you. And you can also finish this off by stitching the middle to your piece. And I did that just by getting it to back to the beginning and then working around another row. And that also has more, you know, dimension. So have fun. I hope you're having fun with this. Um, I it didn't take me very long to make it. Actually, as you can see, I made a bunch. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see each other again very soon because there's more coming for Halloween. Bye bye!